The following program is paid for by the friends and partners of Joyce Meyer Ministries. Christ is the anointed one and he is the anointing. The Holy Spirit anoints us with the presence of God. There's nothing more valuable than the presence of God in your life. The word anoint means to smear or to rub all over with. And so I love that we're anointed with the Holy Spirit because really what that means is that we are just rubbed in and smeared all over with the Holy Ghost. Woo Amen. You know, I put a little perfume on me before I left tonight, and so that's got a little smell, and if I walk by you, you might go, you know, but when you're anointed with the Holy Spirit, whew, when you're anointed with the Holy Spirit, there's something about you that's different. And the stronger that anointing is, the more people notice that there's something different about you, but they don't maybe know what it is. It doesn't mean that you act weird or you get super religious or you float around on a cloud. It just means that something is different about you. People can kind of tell. You, you got some character. You got some honesty. Uh, you're one of those people that keep your word. And you know what happens when you're anointed? You begin to see radical favor in your life. I mean, God begins to open doors for you that you could not possibly open yourself. Now, in one way, the anointing is a free gift from God that comes by His grace and mercy. But in another way, there is a price to pay for that anointing. So maybe I could explain it to you like this. There is an anointing that abides in us. Let's look at 1 John 2, 20. But you have been anointed... You hold a sacred appointment. doesn't say you might get anointed someday if you try real hard. It says you have been anointed. You hold a sacred appointment from, and you have been given an unction. I like that word, unction. That's like a Holy Ghost oomph. <clears throat> Everybody in the building just go. <clears throat> it's kind of just that. Mm. Don't know how to explain it, but there it is. So you have been given an unction from the Holy One, and you all know the truth, or you know all things. Let's look at verse 27. But as for you, the anointing, the sacred appointment, the unction which you received from Him abides permanently in you. So it's in you. If you're born again, you are anointed. It is in you. And it abides permanently in you. It's not going to go away. It's there. So then you have no need that anyone in should, should instruct you, but just as his anointing teaches you concerning everything and is true and is not false, you must abide in, live in, never depart from him, being rooted in him, knit to him, just as his anointing has taught you to do. Now when it says that you don't need to be taught, it doesn't mean that you don't need to be taught like this. It means that you don't need somebody telling you all the time how to run your life because you have God on the inside of you leading you and guiding you. The anointing will lead you. The Bible says that in, in Romans 7 that we are no longer led by the law. We're no longer uh, have a relationship with the law because Jesus fulfilled the law and he died to the law. And when, we, when he died, we died. But now we have a brand new way that we live. We are led by the promptings, by the gentle promptings and urges by the leadership of the Holy Spirit and what he's talking about once again is that anointing that's in you when there's an anointing you'll feel peace when there's an anointing you will feel joy when you're following the anointing you'll do the wise thing you won't do the emotional thing you'll do the wise thing more than anything we need to protect yes I said protect the anointing that's on our life now the anointing is in us it's been given as a gift it comes at the new birth. So how can I say, well, there is a price to pay for the anointing? Well, you remember the woman who came to Jesus with the alabaster box of sweet perfume? And she broke open the box. She broke it and poured out the sweet perfume. 
Well, just as that jar had to be broken for the oil to be poured out, the anointing of the Holy Spirit, the oil of the Holy Spirit that's in us, requires that we allow this clay jar to be broken. So what's in us can be poured out and be a benefit to other people. And one of the things that must be broken in us is rebellion and stubbornness and independence and pride and probably three or four hundred other things. How many of you understand what I'm saying? That whatever is in us, whatever's in me doesn't do you any good if I can't, if God can't get it from in me to you. And the vehicle that carries it is my soul. It's my mind, my will, my emotions. We don't have a spirit problem if we're born again. We've got a soul problem. It's what the Apostle Paul called carnality. And that word actually means a carnal Christian follows animal impulses. Paul put it like this. He said, you follow ordinary impulses. Follow your own thoughts, your own mind, your own will, the crowd. Just kind of do what you want to. Do you know how many people there are that march off to church every Sunday and spend the whole rest of their life doing exactly what they want to do? Millions. It's sad. It's sad indeed. But we don't have to be like that. And thankfully, with all the word that's available to so many people today, people are learning every single day the importance of growing up, maturing in Christ, and being what God wants them to be. So we have an anointing, and we need to learn not to dare try to do anything without that anointing. Saul had to be anointed before he could be king. And, and the Bible says about him that when the Spirit of God came on him, he was turned into another man. Do you know when the Spirit of God comes on you, you can be completely turned in to something that will absolutely shock and amaze not only everybody else, but you. Just amaze you. The things that God will anoint or enable you or equip you to do. If the word anoint sounds too spiritual for you, it just means enablement. It means equipment. It's a gifting that comes to you to be able to do something that you don't naturally know how to do. It's the greatest thing in the world to watch God use you or to use somebody else that you know full well does not have the ability to do what they're doing in the natural. It's beautiful. And by the way, we're not just anointed for spiritual things. Now, please listen to me. We're not just anointed to preach. We're not just anointed to lead worship. We're not just anointed as evangelists. You have to have an anointing for anything that you do in life. You better cry out to God for an anointing to be a parent. You better cry out to God for an anointing to be a husband or a wife. You cry out to God if you have a business. You better have an anointed business if you want that business to succeed. So there's an anointing for everything. God anoints people for business. He anoints people for organization. He anoints people for helps. I mean, there are some people that just, they're so anointed for helps. I mean, all they want to do is help somebody. Well, I'm anointed to tell other people what to do. I love to tell everybody else what to do. <laughs> joking, I'm only joking. Well, kind of, sort of, I don't know. But I'm anointed for leadership. I can't stand to see a mess. If nobody's doing it, I'll take over and you do this, you do this, you do this, you do this, I'll do this, let's get this done. Well, there's some people who just stand around and say, somebody needs to do something. <laughs> well, so they're anointed for something else. <laughs> All the kings had to be anointed. David was anointed. Saul was anointed. Saul lost his anointing, but David didn't lose his. We read this morning about how Saul disobeyed God. He thought he obeyed God, but he didn't really obey God. He gave an, a sacrifice instead of the true offering that God asked him to give. God told him to, to kill the Amalekites and everything there, the sheep, the oxen, the men, the women, 
the babies, everything. Well, that he just like couldn't wrap his head around that. There was, a, there was a lot of good stuff there. So he decided to just keep the good stuff and get rid of the bad stuff. And then he tried to tell God that he had done what he said that he had done. Then he went out and was so proud of himself that he built a monument to himself. And God said, I regret making you king. Well, then he anointed David to be king. Remember, you've got to have an anointing. Well, then he put David in Saul's house, and Saul spent the next, I don't know how many years, throwing spears at David, trying to kill him. When he lost the anointing on his life, or when that anointing was blocked, and he was no longer able to use it, he just went basically totally wacko. Just weird as he could get. And he was constantly throwing spears at David. David kept his anointing, however, because no matter how many spears Saul threw at him, he never learned how to throw spears back. Hmm. Come on, where are you guys at? I said he never learned how to throw spears back. Some of you need to give up spear throwing. When somebody throws a spear at you, and you know what I'm talking about, when somebody hurts you, when somebody talks about you, and somebody doesn't treat you right, you need to not give them what they've given you. You need to treat them the way Jesus tells you to treat them. Well, that's hard. No, that's obedience. No, that's not hard. That's obedience. And that's what breaks the alabaster box because it's not easy for our flesh. That breaks open that alabaster box, and then that anointing can be poured out that is in you. Well, in the book of John, we're taught that the Holy Spirit has taken up residency within us. God has anointed you and me. He's enabled us and equipped us for his purposes. The Bible says that his anointing abides within us. Ginger's here with some questions from our viewing audience. Ginger? Well, Joyce, you, you've been talking about the importance of obedience right. and the anointing, but, but first let's just clarify a little bit because... You said it's important for us to realize that we are not earning the anointing with our obedience. So right. what role does obedience play? Well, obedience equals power. I mean, <laughs> the anointing equals power, I'm sorry. And uh, any time that there's power available, you want it to be in the hands of right people. Mm -hmm. I always like to use the example that I might, uh, we, we had a, a son that we bought a car for him when he was still like 15 years old. But we didn't give him the car until he had driving lessons and he passed his driver's test and his dad went out with him several times. Right. And, and even then, he would only get to drive at certain places and certain times of the day. So that was the authority and the power to use that automobile was released to him a little bit at a time as we knew that he was capable of handling it. Right. And so God has anointed all of us. And that plays out in many different ways in our life. It's the abilities we have. It's the talents we have, the gifts that we have. Uh, it's the enabling power of the Holy Ghost to help us do whatever we need to do. Mm -hmm. And it comes down to power. You know, it's, it's the power for us to, to be very victorious right. in life and even to be used powerfully in the kingdom of God. But even though that power is in us, it's released through us as God sees that we're able to handle that. The, mm -hmm. Another example that I like to use is if you think of a fruit tree, if you see a tree that's heavily laden with, with fruit, with apples, orange, or peaches, whatever, if that tree does not have deep roots, then the first storm or even really good-sized wind that comes along, it's going to blow it right. over. But if it's deeply rooted, then that won't happen. And so one of the ways that we show that we are deeply rooted in God and deeply rooted in His Word is by doing, with the help of the Holy Spirit, what God asks us to do. The Holy Spirit's always ready and willing to help us, but we're not always ready to surrender right. our will to His will. You know, that's really the main thing that God wants. He wants us to surrender our will to His will. It's kind of an interesting thing mm -hmm. to get up.